put some water. All right, hi group. So guys, we're live. We're gonna enjoy ourselves today. So can anybody tell me what scriptures we were working on this month before we went to Wet and Wild? Huh? Pretty close. There's a little bit more to it, but but I sure just got it pretty close. Anybody else? Anybody else remember the scripture? Does anybody remember what lessons were taught? Maybe not knowing the scripture, but maybe knowing what Connie or Tony. Yes, I heard. Judgment. Yes. Yes. This month, the only what Connie and Tony G taught this month. The camouflage. Yes, that was this month. What was the camouflage about? What was the main purpose of the cam cam camouflage? Animals, but what was the purpose of the animals being camouflaged? <laughs> oh, right. So then they. Uh huh, Cody. So then they can't get eaten. So they can't get eaten? Yeah. So, like, they're like protecting themselves. Like, why that would be Okay, is that all she talked about? Was just animals? No. What? Can't remember. Okay, what did Tony G talk about? <laughs> huh? No. Blending into their surroundings. Okay, yeah, getting close. What did Tony G talk about? It was the first, the first teaching. Uh, I don't know. Cody? I think he was talking about how if we would build our, if we would build our foundation on sand or rocks with God. That was last month. That was last month. That's what I was like. I think that was last month. Yeah. That was last month. You're good. That's a good lesson. But that was last month. No one else? Jesus. <laughs> well, yes, it's always about Jesus. But that's a cheap answer. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to read the scripture. So maybe fresh your memory. Uh, I truly just got it the closest. So herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in, in this world. Uh, I don't remember the first part. I don't remember the first part? No? Okay, did you guys, did that make, come up anything that Connie and Tony talk about now? Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. I only remember animals. <laughs> okay. What about, let me give you an example. What did Connie say about my baby? That, hey, you're oh, with me. Oh, oh. That's awesome. That is like perfect in its state. You know how it's perfect in its state. Yes. Good again. There we go. What else I you got? Got, got? You got anything else? I forgot it again. Yeah, the tangerine. The, and how it's, how it's perfect already, but it still has time. Yes, the tangerine is perfect in its state. It still has time to grow, but in that timing, it's perfect, correct? Yeah. So now you guys remember. No. <laughs> Not all of it? No. I don't remember. No, it's okay. It's okay. You'll get it. You'll get it. So I'm going to teach a little bit, a little bit different on this scripture. We talked about we are perfect at the time we're at. So me and Jaden are have different times in our lives in Christ. So at my time in Christ and the way I'm moving in Christ and the way I'm learning and the way I'm developing my walk with God is, is perfect. And the part I'm at is good for my timing. I want to still keep developing because I am not perfect, but at my time, I am perfect in my perfect state. Jaden is at a totally different stance. I'm not in high school. I'm not going through the things she's going through. She has a different relationship with God than I do. Hard work at work school. Me too. I got hard work at work. I sit there most of the time. Just kidding. It's not that hard. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's bring it down, guys. I know we're excited. Okay. So. What is the first step? I know you guys are all taught this. What's the first step you have to do when 
you you want to come to God. Let him in. Yes, be poor. Yes. Mm -hmm. She pretty much said it. Let him in. So what's that mean? You being... Yes, the sinner's prayer of being born again. Letting God to come into your life. Correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. So once God comes into your life, you're Christian, right? You forgave your sins. You have said the sinner's prayer. You forgave no. everything that's happened behind you. Mm -hmm. Is that it? No. No, man. No. 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 Right here. Right here. No? Right here. That's the beginning? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. He forgave you, so I mean... Aren't you perfect and at that time? And I'm good. I don't need to change me. God forgave me. I'm good. I'm good. I don't need to change me. No? Okay, go ahead, Frederick. Uh, okay, so you still, you still need to pro uh, progress. Still need to progress. Mainly because uh, everybody sins every once in a while. Only have to every once in a while? I know I say Probably every day. <laughs> once in a while. So, okay, so we all agree, correct? correct? Give your heart to Jesus. Jesus forgave you of your sins. Now, you're telling me I need to progress. So that means I'm not just standing here. I'm moving, correct? I'm growing. What am I growing towards? I'm going to be really talking to you guys today because I really want you guys to get this. What are we working towards? What are we moving towards? Frederick? What are we moving towards? Spiritual enlightenment. Spiritual enlightenment. Uh, Cody. Uh, I forgot. Okay. Oh. Anybody else? Oh, sorry. To be like Jesus. Okay. Jesus was perfect. He did not sin. Okay. When he was on earth, he did not sin. He had temptation. The devil tried to tempt him. The devil tried to take him down. So, all right. So now we're working towards to be like Jesus, right? We're never going to be like Jesus. We're never going to be perfect. But we're working towards perfection. Working towards Jesus. So when I say perfection, we're work that means Jesus. We're working towards to be like Jesus. We're working towards to be perfection. So, um, John, when he was talking in, in this book... He was talking to the Christians to be in the power of love. What is love? Does anybody know what love is? Never ending. No. An action. Yeah. A verb. It is an action. <laughs> Happiness. Love. God is love. God is love. Period. If you want to know what love is, God is love. You cannot have God if you don't have love. Okay? If you think you have love and you don't have God, you don't have it. They are hand in hand. They are together. God is love. So, if we're working towards perfection, what did Jesus do on earth while he was walking on earth? I know that... Some of you don't know all the Bible, but you know some stories of what Jesus did walking on earth. Yes, he died on the cross. But what else did he do? Noah's Ark was Noah, not Jesus. Help other people? Yeah. Help other people free them from their sins, okay? Adasa? He did miracles, so he healed the sick, right? All right, anything else? What else did Jesus do? Turn water into wine. What else did he do? Did you just like walk around and just be like, hey, I'm Jesus. Hey, yeah. 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 I'm the coolest. I'm, I'm the son of God. Okay. Okay, so he saved the guys from the sinky ship. Okay. He walked on water. Good. Yes. Uh, he gathered a group of individuals that were his followers. So he grabbed a group of individuals that were his followers. Okay. He the Red Sea. Part, no. No, that's not that Moses part of the Red that's Sea. Power of, God. power of God, yes. I'm asking you, Jesus, flesh. <laughs> what did flesh Jesus do? Cody. Oh, I thought you raised your hand, man. I'm sorry. 
Hadassah, one more. Okay, blind to see. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. So, as he walked around, do you think Jesus was... Arrogant? No. No. I'm not saying that. Do you think Jesus was rich? No. No. In love. <laughs> he was a carpenter, yes. But he wasn't rich. He followed and he went towards the people that needed him. So, there's a few... There's... I have two... Uh, six things that really stood out to me when I was reading um, all of John, actually. So, I'm not just sticking to the one scripture about love and how we want to walk towards Jesus. We want to work towards perfection. We want to show love within us. So to show Jesus that Jesus is in us, we have to do something, correct? Yes. We gave Jesus into our heart. Now, how do we show that love so people can see? How do we show that love so other people can get blessed? How do we show that love so other people can have Christ into their heart and see Christ in their heart. If I'm yelling at them and cussing at them, calling them names, calling them stupid, I'm not, I'm not helping the world, I'm not doing all this stuff, I'm not listening to my parents. There's one thing you guys gotta do is to listen to your parents. I'm not listening to my parents, I'm not listening to my boss, I have this bad attitude all the time, I'm not changing, but, oh, I believe in God? What are you talking about? I believe in God? Oh, my friend said that her, her stomach hurt, but I'm not going to pray for her. I'm too scared. I'm not, I'm not going to pray for her. I'm too scared. Uh, I'm at school, and, you know, everybody else is smoking pot, so, uh, you know, I just decided to do it. It wasn't bad. Everybody else decided to do it. Am I showing Jesus? No. What am I showing? Negativity. Negativity. What else am I showing? Evilism. Sin. Evil. Sin. I'm, did you have something to Sin. Okay. I'm following the world. Am I following Jesus? Am I walking towards perfection? I am walking the other way. Yes, we make mistakes, and we can ask Jesus to forgive us, but we need to still be walking in perfection. So, the first one I really got was, uh, by the love, by loving others, we become like Jesus. So, the what was the question about haters, Connie, that you said in your game? Would you get, rather get rid of hatred or all hunger? And so that was really powerful to me because by loving others, we become like Jesus. Do you think we I hate the other race? If I hate, what is it? I hate people that wear glasses. <laughs> I, hate, I hate people, I hate people that are in college because they think that they're all that. I hate people that are rich. I hate people that are poor. I hate people. So is that showing the love of Jesus? No. So guess what we do sometimes? What happens when we go on social media and we're like, 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 oh, that girl's ugly, that girl's cool. Why she post that? Oh, that guy can't play football. He sucks. He does this. He does that. Boys. You alright? <laughs> okay. Is that showing the love of Jesus? No. No, they can't see you. I, I, I understand that, that they can't see you. Yeah, they can see what you like, but if you don't like it, as long as, as, long as you don't make a rude comment, they, they, they can't see you. But your heart does. Jesus does. So instead of when I see a girl being showing all her her goodies or whatever you want to call them, all showing all her stuff, I'm going to be like, instead of being like, girl, that girl needs help, she has some problems, I need to pray for her. Because she doesn't know that, she, that Jesus loves her and she doesn't have to flaunt herself. 
that she is enough. She is beautiful without showing everything. That she is beautiful and confident in Christ. So now I'm thinking different. When I'm going through these pictures, I'm like, no, I, I understand. I'm not going to be staring at this picture if she's super provocative. But guess what? I'm going to pray for her. There's little things in life that are walking towards Jesus that we decide we can walk towards Jesus and be like, oh, this is an appropriate picture. I'm not going to be following an Instagram thing that has a whole bunch of nasty pictures on it. Or I could be like, oh, no one's seen me. Everybody's seen me swipe by. And, you know, it's okay. No one knows what I'm doing in my room. No. Jesus does. Jesus does. Exactly. So we're walking towards perfection, right? We're walking towards Jesus. Okay. Second one is... Jesus lived among those and he served. So, Jesus lived among all the people, the poor, all of them, okay? And he served. He didn't just say, oh, you're hungry? Okay. <laughs> you're hungry? I'm hungry too. I'm going to eat all this food. I don't know what you're going to do. But I'm, <laughs> I'm going to eat all this food and I don't care if you're hungry. So, he served. What does our church do before COVID? Okay. What did our What did our church do once a month? Feed the homeless. Feed the homeless. On raise your hand. It was like I think it's called like an outreach. Mm-hmm. Did you want to say that? Food bank. Food bank. Awesome. All right, we did outreaches, we prayed for him, we gave him food. Did Jesus do that? Yes. Yeah. No way. Yes. Yeah. So Jesus did that. So what are we doing as a church, as a body, as a personal decision of taking my time off on Saturday when I could be going to the lake? When I could be going and having fun? What am I doing? I'm sweating, giving food out, or we're getting rained on. I'm taking a sacrifice because I want these people to know God. And I'm walking towards perfection. Jesus did it. Right? You just said Jesus did it. Jesus walked among the people and prayed for the people. Jesus blessed the people with food. He, he prayed for them for miracles to happen. He did that, right? So when we go to these outreaches once a month, that's what we're doing. We're walking in faith, walking towards perfection. Even little simple things like that, when we're not paying attention, this God is moving. We could just been like, nah, that's too much work. Our church is not that big. Do you see all these chairs? How many people in our area come in? Do you know? 60, 70,000. 60, 70,000 people are in our area command. So that's not all Vegas, guys, if you don't know what an area command is. It's just a part of Vegas. So most of you guys live in our area of command. So in our stuff. Some people live a little farther, so you're not, like, I don't, I live in North Las Vegas, so I don't live on this side of town. But most of us, most of you guys live on this side of town. So most of you came from what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys came from our outreaches. Yeah, that's so cool. I have my I know, I Most of you guys came from outreaches. Most of our youth group came from outreaches. So what that means is that we were there. Got, we, we were led by Jesus. We were walking in faith. We had people out there talking about Jesus and got you to sign up and come here. Okay? So we're walking in perfection. We're walking towards Jesus to get you guys. I'm telling you, and it's way worth it. Okay? Third one. All right. So then, okay, we got them, right? We went to the outreaches. We got them. And now you guys are here. Do you have a question? Okay, we got them. You guys are here. We went to the outreaches. Now you guys are here. Now what we do with them? We just say, you're on your own, homie. Like, I don't know what you're going to do. What do we do? We help them. We teach them. Okay, we teach them. We help them. We can't we, If Christine came to an outreach and she's, she's doing all this stuff and saying, God is wonderful. 
school. This is what God will do in your life, blah, blah, blah. And then she comes to church, and she's like, I don't know you. Don't talk to me. Why are you touching me? She did it to me. Oh. oh. <laughs> she probably did it jokingly. So, so, you know, she was like, no. And then all of a sudden didn't show God anymore. All of a sudden said, no, I don't care. Oh, I don't I do not do that when I get out of the church. I lie to my parents. I go to parties. I cuss. I do all this stuff. Is she showing and teaching that new believer that might never, ever heard of God in their lives? Is she showing and teaching them the right way to follow Christ? No, ever. No. Come on, Christine. Step it up. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Christine would never do that. Just kidding. That's all the opposite of Christine. Yes, that is opposite of Christine. Just joking. So, now we have to teach them. We have to teach them the word. What am I doing right now? Teaching us the word. Okay. Where did I come from? That you guys remember, um, I gave my life to yeah. Jesus at 15. I didn't know nothing about God. I knew that there was a God, but I, I didn't know anything. I didn't come to church before. I never nothing. I cussed a lot. My dad was an alcoholic. I fought all the time. I got suspended all the time. I, I didn't know who God was. When I came to God at 15, my life changed. Where I did things and my friends were like, you're, you're, not, you're not the same. And I lost a lot of friends. Because they were like, you don't want to come out and party? You don't want to do this? And I, did, I chose. You guys have a decision. You guys are mostly around 15. You know, give or take or whatever. But you guys have a, you have a decision. It wasn't my parents' decision. My parents did not come to church when I came at 15 years old. I came by myself. I came for the wrong reason first. I came for a boy, to be honest. I came for a boy. And guess what? God opened my eyes, and I never knew God. And I was like, I ain't leaving here. I don't want to be with you, and I don't want you. I want Jesus. And that was what I stayed for. <laughs> So, so I stayed for Jesus. My parents did not come to church at all. My parents would drop me off and go back home. That's where my mom went. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they would pick yes. They wouldn't just leave me here. They would pick me up and drop me off until I was until I was 16 and I got a car. Okay, and then I could bring myself. But when I was 15, I did it myself. You guys have a choice. You have a choice to what direction you want to go. When I first became with Christ. I didn't listen to anything else but Christian music. Because if I didn't listen to only, not only Christian music at that time, I would cuss. I'd go back to where I was. I, ha I had to stop everything to give my full heart to Christ. I'm telling you, it wasn't easy. But it was a choice. So, this lesson is about moving forward, right? I'm working towards Christ. I'm working towards perfection. I had to stop doing what I was doing. So that meant I had to do something. Jesus had to help me, and I had to pray about it all the time. But you have to do something. You sitting there saying you're, you're Christian, but going to school and saying, I'm going to beat up this kid because he looked at me funny. It's not showing Christ. It's not showing the perfection and the love of Jesus. Correct? That's what we're working for. So, you have a choice. No matter how old you are, your parents have a choice. You have a choice that's going to be totally different than your parents. But you have a choice. Okay, so we're moving towards perfection. We went to the outreaches. We accepted Jesus into our heart, correct? We're working toward perfection. Now we went out to the outreaches. Now you're here. We got some kids here. Now we're, being, now we're teaching them, right? Now, the next one is we prayed for them. Sometimes the best thing you can do for a friend is pray for them. Sometimes it's not being like, you're a stupid girl, stop doing that. 
be like, hey, can I pray for you? And or, or not even tell her and be like, I'm going to pray for her all night long. I need, she needs help. She's not listening to me. I'm going to pray for her. So what's really cool with you guys is that you guys need to get close together. Okay? We have a group text. I'll, I'll be front. We, we have a group text between me and my husband, KK and Maribel, John and Destiny. You guys all know them. Okay? What? No, this is leader, leaders. That's what I'm saying. You need to have a group with you guys. Okay? You guys need to do this. This is how you step forward and help each other. When I have a problem and I'm upset or my stomach hurts or I'm having a bad day or this is my family member, this and that, guess what I do? What do I do, babe? Call Maribel. <laughs> <laughs> I call Maribel. But we have this group text and I text them. Sometimes I won't even tell them what it is. Hey, guys, just pray for me. Or sometimes I'll tell them. And guess what they do for me? Pray for me. Give me guidance. Give me scriptures of what, what God says. These are friends. Those are the friends you want and need. Is someone to pray for you. So we talk to each other and, we're, and we do it all the time. We send each other funny things on there. We send each other people, we send each other preachings. We like YouTube, we send a lot of YouTube back and forth. And so we send a lot of preachings to each other, a lot of new songs, Christian songs that come out, a lot of different events, things that we're like, hey, did you see this? We need to pray for this. Yes, we have funny times, and yes, sometimes it's not about Jesus, but we all have the common denominator. We're there for each other. We're not there to bring each other down. We don't gossip about each other. Maribel says, oh, can you just pray for me? I'm not going over to my husband being like, I wonder what she needs to pray for. I wonder what's going on with her. She, I bet she's just dramatic. I bet there's nothing wrong. Yes, exactly. Gossip is horrible. Okay, so we are not like that. We come together and pray for each other. You guys can do that among each other. When you have a bad day at school, when your parents are getting on your nerve, there's times. That's what those friends are for. You're going to have those days, and those are the friends you want. They're not the friend that condemns you and tells you you're dumb. And the friend that's like, oh, hey, let's go to smoke some pot. You'll forget about it later. Hey, let's go to this party. Let's get your mind off of it. Someone that's going to tell you the word of God, the person that's going to pray for you, the person that's going to be there for you, that's who you want. Put you in check when you need it. Yes. Put you in check when you need it. Sometimes you're not going to like what they're going to tell you, but it's the truth. Is that one of your guys' phones? Is that upstairs? All right. Next one. Um, is that upstairs? I think you guys are oh, okay. real good at yours. I do. I was like, someone's here a video game or something. Okay, so then he served them and ultimately gave his, his life for the others. He gave his life for them. So I kind of, I was trying to think of a way to follow Christ in that, in that circumstance in my life of giving my life to, for somebody else. The only thing I could think of was because I'm like, I don't know if I could actually die for someone else. It would be hard, you know. But Jesus did for the sinners, the people that mocked him, the people that whipped him. He did for everybody. I don't think I could do that, and that's why I'm not God. But what in my life can I do right now that represents that? My, my thought was is, Sometimes when we go through these hard things, like what Jesus did on the cross, there's nothing we could do that ever compared to that. But I'm saying, is the things that we go through that are super hard in our lives, that feel like our life is over, that my family member died, I had a miscarriage, my, my family is getting divorced, all these things that are being destroyed in your life and that are uh, that you're having this hard time and you're going to give glory to God. 
what you can do is now take this and pray about it, and God's going to help you through it, and you're going to go through it. You don't want to walk backwards and be like, God doesn't love me. God wouldn't do this to me if, if he loved me. God would, God would give me what I prayed for if he loved me. Sometimes he needs you to wait. And sometimes those things that we go through, those hard things that we go through, are for somebody else. So those things that I went through, this is for example for me, is going through miscarriages, or one miscarriage, sorry, and not being able to have a baby for four years. Okay, this is not just food. Okay, so now I'm having a baby, right? But I had to go through it. Didn't mean that I didn't have struggles. Didn't mean that there was no times that I was like, God, where are you? I don't understand. But that was, that was a hard thing I went through. And now, guess what I get to do? I get to pray for women that are going through it. I get to fight the devil for what he tried to attack me on. The thing that he tried to destroy me and say, oh, guess what? God doesn't love you. God's not thinking about you. God let your parents divorce. God let you not be rich. God let you do all this. No. God sometimes puts you through those circumstances so that you could help somebody else. Because guess what? Me and Maribel, me and Maribel, before I had this character, we weren't really close. But because we have the same common thing that happened, guess what? She's my biggest prayer warrior. And I'm hers. So you'll find that. You'll be able, now I get to pray for women that went through it. Because guess what? I knew what, what I know what it feels like. Before, I was like, yeah, that sucks, but it's really hard to understand until you go through it, until your parents are not together anymore, until you don't have money, until you're homeless, until you're this and that. I'm going to worship God no matter what. Through my struggles and through my happiness, you have to worship and give glory to God. So we're constantly moving forward, even though it feels like my li our lives are going to destroy we're going to still be walking forth in Christ. Does that make sense? Okay? We're going to be walking towards Christ even through our horrible storm that is happening. And now we give back to others because now I'm going to pray for those people. I'm going to be there for those people that go through those hard times. Because I'm going to understand. I'm going to get them. I'm going to be like, I understand you. I am here for you. We can go through this. And I'm going to be like, no. And I'm going to pray for that person every day. Okay? Next one. Uh, let's see. i got to read my notes. And so now we're living a powerful example for our own lives. We're living that example. We put all those things together that we did, right? And we put, we, we, we accepted Jesus. We're going out and teaching people. We're coming, we're going out and praying for people. We're walking in faith. But what are we, we're doing something at all times, right? I'm not just sitting there and just saying, okay, God, go ahead. I believe in you. Go ahead. And not doing anything. God wants you to be a doer. He wants you to do something. Yes, you're perfect at your state of mind and state right now. But sometimes you've got to get your hinder parts up and do something. So those times that you think, oh, I should pray for that person, but you're scared. So sometimes that's when you have to step out of faith. I'm telling you, there was one time, I have to tell you the story, it was great. There was one time I was 16, and I worked for CeCe's Pizza, okay? And I, I was delivering pizza to this uh, big, like, jungle gym place, okay? And I'm in this, my little red, car, my little, little red truck. And I drive up in there. This is a big, I'm telling you, bigger than the cake. Big, big, I'm sorry to say, big, big black dude. And I'm a little white girl, okay? All right? So I'm just going to say how it is. Big, big black dude. Big, you know, big, like, big football player. Oh. Big dude. And I'm, like, looking at this guy, and I'm, like, oh, my gosh. I'm kind of nervous because he's right by my truck when I get out to after I deliver the, the pizzas. And I'm, like, oh, my gosh. I almost didn't want to walk to my car. So I'm like, oh man, all right. So I hurry up, walk to my car, and I get in my car, and I lock my doors, okay? 
I'm like this big black guy, you know. And, and for some reason, God kept telling me, tell him I love him. And I was like, I, I ain't gonna tell this guy that Jesus loves him. I was like, you're crazy. Well, then I'll answer your question if I love And I was like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. And I almost drove away. And God just kept telling me, Autumn, you better tell him that I love him. And I'm telling you, this guy looked super mean, like no, straight face, like dirty look, like, and I did not want to talk to big black dude. And I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. So I drop by, I'm about to leave. I'm like, all right, Jesus, I'm gonna do it. I really don't want to, but I'm gonna do it. And I, cr I barely, I didn't have a button. Uh, and I had to roll it down. <laughs> so I rolled down my window and I cracked it really, really, really like barely. And I looked at him and I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir, but um, Jesus just wanted me to tell you that he loved you. And this guy had the biggest smile I've ever seen in my entire life. Smile. Because imagine this guy was straight, straight faced, just very serious man. Got the biggest smile on his face. And was like, thank you so much. I really need it. And he was having a bad day. But if I would have just drove off, I would have never seen the blessing. I would have never seen the smile. You never know if I drove away and what would happen if he didn't hear that. But all he needed to hear, that's all I had to say. And I was like, okay, thanks, bye. And drove off. I did what God told me to do. And I was like, I'm out. So, but... Sometimes you have to do something. When God tells you to do it, you have to do it. Yes, he can do it by himself, but he wants, he chose you to do it. So it's gonna be hard sometimes, but stepping out in faith will be a bigger blessing. That made my day. And and I still tell it to this day, and I was 16 when that happened. And so it's an awesome testimony. Did you have a question, Ben? Okay, brown person, black person. I'm not, I'm not white, I'm green. <laughs> but it's okay. Yes, so she said that that reminded her of, um, so the people that didn't go to Wet n Wild, what happened is we got second, t we got uh, tickets to go Wet n Wild, and guess what, they were free, because what happened was the first time you guys went to Wet n Wild, that it started raining and you had to leave. So God blessed us with a whole other set of 20-something tickets, correct? 20? 22. 22 tickets. Got, we got blessed and got 22 tickets. Well, only, what, 19 came? 17. We had 15, 15 people come, so we had seven extra tickets. Okay, so we had seven extra tickets, okay? So, because we, we came, not all everybody came, so we had seven extra tickets. So, we wanted to bless somebody else with ours, because we, we, got, we got our blessing. So, we're going to bless somebody else. So, um, I think Maribel went and gave tickets, and we, we kind of, like, they started... But whoever was gonna go out buy tickets, we were like, whoever's gonna go buy tickets, we're gonna go give them these tickets until we're out of our seven tickets. So that was a blessing. So it says she said that it reminded her of that. That's exactly exactly what I'm saying. God will bless you, so you can bless other people. You you go through some things that sometimes are, are really hard for someone else. But guess what? We're moving towards perfection. We're constantly moving forward. I don't want to stand still and be in the same spot the rest of my life. I don't want to be standing in the same job, never changed, never made any more money, never got, never did nothing, just sat at home and was the same person my entire life. I want to be moving toward home. I'll be moving towards perfection. I'm moving towards Jesus. I want my life to be like Jesus and being different and miracles and seeing miracles and praying for people. That is what I want. And you guys all have a choice of what you guys want in your lives. Go ahead, Patrick. What was your question? When you said big black, you got automatically thought of KK. Of KK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
not that big. Yeah. Really tall. So it was a good story. But it was a blessing. God blessed that man that he really needed to hear that Jesus loved him. And that was a really awesome story. So so I'm I'm actually going to pray. Did you want to? Okay. Um, I'm actually going to pray. I think I had a few more points, but actually I think we hit most of the points um, that we're working towards perfection. We're not perfect. We have things to work on, and it's your choice. You can either go backwards or you can go forwards. I'm sorry. I want to move forward. Sometimes we're going to stumble. Sometimes we're going to make those mistakes. Sometimes we're going to sin because we're going to sin. We're not perfect. I'm not Jesus. I'm not God. Okay? I'm not so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stumble, but I'm going to keep looking forward. I might stumble, and I'll ask God, please forgive me. Please, please help me through this so I can move forward. All right? Does anybody have any questions before I pray us out? Serious questions? Um, yes, Katie. Uh, do you think after you confess my friends, that he has kidney failure? Yes. Okay. So she wants us to pray for her friend that has kidney failure. Why do we do that, guys? So she could be better. She could come better. Do you believe that she can be healed? Yeah. Do you truly believe that? Yeah. All right. We just want to make sure. Who wants to pray for her friend? Who wants to pray for her friend? What was his name? I'll pray for Jay. What's his name? Jay. Jay? Okay, so we're going to pray for Jay. Hadassah, you said you want to pray for him? Yeah. All right, you want to please? So this is what I'm talking about. This is stepping out in faith. Um, this is a step. Oh, I'm just waiting for the Okay, this is stepping out in faith. Okay, guys. Praying when you sometimes you're uncomfortable, but guess what? You said you said I asked you if you believed. So if you believe, then why would you be? Why wouldn't you want to pray for him? Just because you're scared and you don't want to. What's going to happen if if nothing happens? Nothing. But what if something does happen? What if he gets healed? What if she comes back and says he has no more kidney failure? Then you can have a testimony and say, guess what? We prayed for this guy. Guess what Jesus did? And that's a great testimony. Then you can be later in life like me and tell your youth kids. And tell your family members. And tell your friends. Because we're moving in perfection. We're moving towards and wanting the love of God to be poured out upon everybody. Even Jay, 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 right? Even Jay, that's not here. We want the love of God to touch him there, even though we're here. All right, so Hadassah is going to pray for him, okay? And I want everybody to bow their heads and pray with her because we believe, correct? You guys all believe? Dear Father God, we, please, we pray for Jay that because we all love him, even though we don't know him. And we pray that he grows perfected in your image. In this state he is in, that he is already perfected. You're just moving him towards even more perfection. And that he will be a blessing and just healthier than all of us combined. That he will be a glowing light to others. And that he will succeed in all he does. And he will know he was from the lowest and from the top in the name of Jesus. And that we just pray for him that he even though he's going through a dark time, he wants to be a light in others' path, and that he's going to be perfected in you because you have a plan for all of this that's going through. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, do you guys know what amen means? So, it's like, it's like, yeah. so be it. That's it. So be it. That's going to happen. We said it in Jesus' name. All right. So I'm now I'm going to ask someone to pray us out. Actually, I was going to pray, but... What did Emily just learn? Be confident. Huh? You have to be confident because if you don't pray, then how is it going to happen? Exactly. We learned we're walking towards perfection. We're walking towards Jesus. Even if we're, we're uncomfortable, this is how we do it. Praying is uncomfortable sometimes if you don't do it consistently. But praying is just talking to God. There's no right or wrong way. You, you just talk to God. And whatever comes out or whatever the Holy Spirit gives you is what you say. So who wants to pray us out? You want to pray us out? Leukemia? Okay. Who wants to pray for that? You want to pray for that? You want to pray for it? Yeah? Debbie. 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 Mm-hmm. 
Lord, we pray that Debbie will get better. She is in our hearts. We love her. She gets better. And anybody else, whoever, who's having a bad time, I, I pray for them as well. God, God will always be with us. He will lead us through life. Whenever you're, whenever you're down, he'll lift you back up on your feet. Amen. 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 Thank you, David. Okay. Anybody else want prayer? Because guess what? The Holy Spirit's going to be moving in people's houses. I wouldn't want to miss out. What's up, KK? My wrists hurt, both of them. So your, somebody, both of your wrists hurt? Yeah, so if somebody can pray for my wrists, that would be <laughs> awesome. Frederick, you're going to pray for KK? Okay. So, if you ever see us say, reach your hands out, what we do, and why we do that is it's a, it's a point of contact. So some, a lot of the time we touch, but we're not going to touch KK because he's behind the camera. So Frederick, you're going to actually come up here because I'm going to give you the mic. Where's your mask? Uh, just stand back real fast and I'll put my mask on. Okay? But reaching your hand out is a better way to knowing that I'm directing my prayer to KK's hands, okay? So I'm doing this, that, so if we say reach your hands out or you feel like I'm just kind of closing my eyes and I'm praying, you know, you know touch that object, touch, raise your hand towards that because we are directing our prayer towards KK's wrist, correct? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to, uh, Frederick's going to pray, pray for KK's wrist and we're all going to agree, all right? Uh, KK, I hope you're doing okay, and I hope your wrist feel better soon, because, bro, it hurts a lot when your wrist gets messed up, and I hope God helps heal you, and I hope you don't have anything serious right now, because that would be very, very bad. So, we pray for you, and everybody else in this room, if you have any family members, or if you were stricken with disease or harm yourself. Amen. Hoping that they were going to start getting better. They're good? He still hurt a little bit. Bro, I'm Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's not how it works. So just keep praying for me that yeah, they will continue to get better. Yes. So there's nothing yeah, to get give, mad about. You always give glory to God when someone gets healed. You don't got powers. We're magic. No, you're not magic. You don't got no powers. You don't do nothing for me. Not only Jesus. So, so every time you pray for someone and someone gets healed, you always make sure the glory goes to God. Remember what I was telling you? Give your, your bad times, your good times. You always give glory to God. Don't be prideful. That would be really hard to get away from. Pride is a really horrible thing. Okay. Does anybody else need pray? because I understand how she feels with the stomach issues being formed last week, but it hurts a lot. But all I can do is pray for her to get better, get lots of rest and lots of fluids and food in her system to make her stomach feel better. Because we all love her and cherish her, even she's a pride and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have Jaden's mom that's in the hospital. Who wants to pray for Jaden's mom? 
Christine? Okay. Next, the next prayer out is a boy. Well, I got a lot of girls stepping out. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> Okay. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you. We uh, thank you for today's youth and that we're all here today to listen to um, the leaders preach. Pray for Jaden's mom and even uh, we pray that uh, by her stretch, by stretch, she's healed and I know her body will shape up to your word, Lord. And we pray that she'll have a fast recovery. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Sorry. Stay there. I'm going to prayer request that we are praying for a family that has COVID and I want you guys to pray for someone if someone wants to pray I'm hoping a boy will stand up and pray for someone for COVID and their families and I'll just pray for this this, this country right we want this virus to go away correct you really want to pray or Erica wants to pray can I have a prayer request Yep, you can have a prayer request after. Cody, are you going to pray for COVID? Okay. You sure? This person lives out of state, guys. Yeah, lives out of state, but we're going to pray for everybody. But we want to pray for him. I can reach your phone. State, so. You guys can all reach your hands to the phone. We're praying for um, the person that is on the phone needing prayer for COVID, okay? Go ahead. Please, Lord Jesus, help this family in the time of need. Please help us with COVID and try to make it go away. Please save us, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good job. Good job. All right, we have a request from Erica. My mom's knee, because she's getting surgery on it. Mom's Your mom's knee? Okay, her mom's knee. Mm -hmm. Her mom's knee, because they're going to go, she's going to have surgery. Does anybody want to pray for that? Well, you already prayed. You did good. You want to try a mirror? No?
Praise God. Father God, we thank you for this night. Lord God, we thank you that your anointing and your power is here, Lord God. I sense your presence, Lord God, as the children and the youth were praying, Lord God, that you are in it. Praise God. You're in it. So with power and with anointing, we celebrate the name of Jesus. Do what you are famous for, O God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to bring something out, so hold on. So I'm going to bring something out to you, okay? I just want you to see it, because we're going to do one song to worship the Lord with, all right? You know the song is, uh, Do What You Are Famous For. Okay, we're going to do that song, we're going to worship God, but I want to show you something, because this happened a couple of days ago. Hold this one. All right, guys, everybody say bye to the Instagram Live.